Now we're going to go ahead and learn how to push our projects up to GitHub so we can start creating our online presence. We're going to go ahead and create a new Xcode project just so we can test that to make sure we're able to make Git work. And I can press create a new Xcode project. And I'm going to make this a single view application. And we can give it a product name, Git test. We'll give it the organization code coalition. And I'm going to leave all my other default settings the same as well. I'm going to go ahead and press next and it's very important that we're selecting the source control option create a Git repository on Mac. So make sure that option is selected and we can press create. And the first thing we need to do in order to get Git to work is we need to go to Xcode on the menu and go to preferences and we're going to go to downloads and we're going to download command line tools. So I can go ahead and press this downloads. It's going to ask for my password so I can install the software. And while we're waiting for that to install, we can go ahead and get some other things set up. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to GitHub. And if you don't already have an account, go ahead and create an account and sign up for one. I already have an account, so I'm just going to press the sign in button and enter my user credentials so I can log into GitHub. And what GitHub is a community that allows us to host our projects and we can check out other people's projects. We can contribute to other people's projects. And we can upload projects as well that we find really cool or useful. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my username and password here. And I can press sign in. And we can take a look at what GitHub looks like as soon as it loads up on my computer. So we see that my profile is pretty active here. I've got some stuff going on. And I watch a bunch of directories so I get to see when people push to these directories. As we get started, we're going to first create a new repository so that we can host our information on GitHub. So we can go ahead and I'm going to call this test git uh, iOS project. And I'm going to go ahead and make this public. If you pay for your account, you can make your repositories private uh, if you want, if you have proprietary code or if you're working on a project uh, that you don't want other people to be able to read your code for. Um, but for now, we're not going to be doing anything really in this project that will make us millions of dollars. So go ahead and make this public, especially since um, if you have the free version, this is your only option. We're not going to check the option initialize this repository with a readme. And we also don't need to add a gitignore file because Xcode actually automatically pre-prepares the project to be added to Git and GitHub. So we're kind of set in terms of these initial uh, kind of setup code. So we can go ahead and press create a repository, create repository. And now it's going to give us uh, some hints here. And in the previous video, we learned about terminal. Well, terminal and command line are synonymous for our purposes. And it gives us a hint as to what kind of code we need to add or lines or statements in terminal in order to properly add our project to GitHub. So we can actually skip these first three lines because again, our Xcode project initialized a Git repository already when we selected the use version control option. So we're actually gonna start with git commit dash M first commit. So I can go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna go back to my project over here and hopefully my command line tools have finished downloading. So they have, I have this check mark here. And it's important to download command line tools, otherwise we won't be able to use Git properly with our Xcode project. So make sure you're doing this. Again, it's in the Downloads tab inside of Xcode. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up Terminal next. And once we have Terminal open, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our Git test project. So I can type ls. And I saved the git test on my desktop, so I'm going to cd into desktop. I can type ls again, and we see git test is now on my desktop, so I can cd into git test. And notice when I have a two-word directory, how it adds the backslash and then the forward slash for the two, two words. So this uh, backslash allows us to add a space in between these two words. And again, very case sensitive here. Because uh, I only have one thing named git, I was able to use the autocomplete and see this. But if I had another project named git, it wouldn't allow me to tab unless I have the unique name. There can only be one completion. So I'm going to go ahead and press return. And now I'm in my current git test directory. 
I can type ls again and we see that we have our git test directory, we have an Xcode project, and we have a tests uh, unit test uh, directory as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to add or stage all of these files to be added to git. So we're going to go ahead and type git add and add a period after which is going to add all of our files and it's just going to basically prepare them to get added to our repository. They're not actually in our repository yet but they're, they're staged, they're ready to go. So we can type enter and next I'm going to go ahead and type, we can even paste uh, so I can do command v from uh, our code over here, git commit dash m first commit or I can just type it in so git commit dash m first commit and what we're basically saying is, okay, now that we have a bunch of files that are ready to go, actually add them to our repository so that we can uh, put them under, so we can subversion them and get them ready to get added to our remote repository, which will be on GitHub. So I can go ahead and hit enter. And it says nothing to commit, working directory is clean. So that's good. We're currently on the branch master, and we'll talk more about branching later on. But for now, we haven't made any changes yet, so there's nothing really to commit. So we're ready to go. The next thing I want to do is I want to set up my remote repository. And what this is going to do, we're going to type in the command git remote add. And what we're going to be able to pass in here is the repository URL where we're going to store our information. So we need to give it an origin point. So we're going to do git remote add origin and we can give it the HTTP address. So I can go back to my Git project here and notice it gives me this helpful handy hint here for my command line to add git remote add origin and then the URL. So I'm just going to copy the URL in. And now my project has a remote repository that it's pointed to. So the final step is we actually need to push our code up to Git or GitHub so that our remote repository now has the information in our current project. So now we need to go ahead and push our changes to our origin repo which is on GitHub. And to accomplish this we can use the push command. So we can type git push. Now we need to tell it where our remote is which happens to be origin and the branch where our code is currently saved which is master. We haven't learned about multiple branches yet, but we're going to assume that everything is on our master branch for now. We also have a handy little tool in dash u which allows us to save our parameters. So next time we can just do git push uh, master. And we don't have to add all of this other code in. So we can type git push dash u origin master and hit enter. And we'll enter our credentials for GitHub. And notice here for our password that we don't see any um, characters being added. And this is just a safety precaution. Even though I can't see it, the characters were added. And when I press return, we'll be able to see that it's now pushed to master and that my code now exists on GitHub. I can confirm this by going back to GitHub and looking at my project. And if I refresh my project now, we're going to go ahead and see that all my code is now available on GitHub. So we have git test my project and I can look in the folder and I see ccviewcontroller.m and all my files are here. 